bom dia. So it's great for me to always come to Brazil, to spend time with you, Delphi developers, the chosen ones, the spectacular ones, the spirit of being here, the happiness, the technology, it's just great to be able to spend a day with you. I'll be here all today. I am flying tonight, but I'm here all today to spend time with you. I know you'll be in sessions learning about the technologies of today and also tomorrow. And I want to make sure you have a really great day. A really great day. Uh, have fun, learn a lot, and hopefully this morning and throughout the day, you'll see a big future for Delphi. We have more than 10 years of plans for things we want to add to Delphi to help you build the applications of today and tomorrow. It's great to be a part of Embarcadero because Embarcadero is a software tools company that cares about development, database, productivity, cares about development environments and code insights and help hints and all the things that help you be more successful. And no matter what you're doing in your projects, in your company, if you're architecting, if you're doing application development, if you're doing SQL database development, or if you're managing the running and administration of applications, then we have the, the complete family of products for you. If you only write code, then we'll do everything we can to help you be successful. But sometimes we know that developers also do testing, I hope. <laughs> and we have help for you as well. So a complete family of products, individual products for programming languages, Delphi C++, Delphi Prism, PHP, database tools for design of your data models, for debugging your stored procedures, for profiling your databases, and we have our all access tool chest, which gives you everything, all the tools, all 18 or 19 tools in one complete tool, tool set. And if you choose to use an individual product, or if you choose to use multiple products, or if you choose to use all of the products. We also have our tool cloud. And the tool cloud is made up of the individual products, as well as a license server to manage all of your licenses for all the different products, inside your own firewall, or you can choose to the licenses like we do today on our server when you register the product. The tool cloud provides a deployment server for the applications 
the tools that you use. You can install from the delivery server. You can also choose to just load one of our tools from the server into memory, use it, quit, and it goes away. We virtualize the registry, we virtualize the file system, and it allows you to move from computer to computer to computer on the network and use whatever tools you want. Using a network named account or a concurrent or floating account, which allows multiple team members to share the different products. And whenever we release new versions of the products, your delivery server will listen to our release servers and grab the latest versions of Delphi, of ER Studio. So you have your choice of, you, of buying an individual product and installing it and using it, or buying multiple or all the products and run them in the tool cloud inside your infrastructure. One of the things that I love about all of our products is that when I think about something I want to do, there's usually one or more of the products that can help me. If I need to model my code, my data, and my business logic, then I have the IDE with UML, and I have ER Studio for data modeling, business modeling, and software modeling. When I'm developing my Delphi code, I'm in the IDE. I have code completion, error insight, parameter insight, help insight. If I want to build my SQL statements, I can load up Rapid SQL, which gives me code insight for SQL language for the database that I want to work with. It gives me the code completion. As I'm using a table, it will give me the list of columns as I'm typing. So I don't have to remember or type everything. It will complete the SQL statements for me. If I want to debug my code and debug the store procedure, I can be in the IDE, and I can use Rapid SQL. If I want to unit test my code and data, I can write unit tests for my code, and I can write unit tests to make sure the database is being updated. With the new Delphi XE, we have subversion change management source code control built into the IDE. If I want to do change management of my metadata and my data in my database, I have DB Change Manager as a database tool. And if I want to profile my code, we now have AQ Time integrated into the IDE for profiling your methods, your functions. And we have DB Optimizer for profiling your database to make sure that you're passing and using optimal SQL statements. So however you think about getting a development project done, there's the Delphi IDE and a whole family of database tools that can help you. So for Delphi, it's the vision is Use Delphi native code with Delphi. Use .NET manage code for Windows, Linux, Macintosh, iPhone, eventually iPad, using Delphi Prism. And eventually, we'll have native code compilers for many more platforms than just Windows. 
And then you'd have your choice of native code or managed code in everything that you build, on every device and platform. The component library, the VCL, the IDE and all the tooling that comes with it. At this conference, you'll hear and see and learn all about DataSnap for doing distributed, multi-tier application development. And if we don't make it, or if we don't provide it, there's a community of consultants and trainers and software companies and tool vendors who provide great additional technologies and products for you to be successful. And the vision of Delphi is all about what you can build and how fast you can do it and how easy because I'm getting older so I can't I can't work as many hours as I used to and I'm only have so much time to get everything done so build and build fast it's what you can do with the ap application once it's done where you can run it where you can deploy it what types of databases and what types of services you can consume and what you can connect to. So if we look at a Delphi client application, we'll have many kinds of inputs, mouse, keyboard, but on other devices like iPhone, you have GPS, you have touch, just as you have touch on Windows 7 uh, in a touch screen. You have gestures and taps and double taps. When I was in Buenos Aires last week, someone wanted to use Delphi with eye retina recognition and handprint recognition and fingerprint recognition for security. And there are components and hardware devices that let you do biometrics. Voice, input, voice output. Uh, Andriano has a PlayStation 3 and he has the motion detection. So you wave your hand, not, to, not just to say hi, but to move to the next page, move to the next page. So all of these kinds of inputs must be possible, as well as mouse and stylus and keyboard. It's about what kind of services you can build applications that, to connect to. SOAP servers, COM objects, RESTful web services, TCP IP, uh, other forms of communication. Connecting with social networks, using the internet as the ultimate set of reusable components and services. On the right hand side, we used to put database, but it's really now storage. Yes, Interbase, Firebird, Oracle, Microsoft, DB2, and so on, databases. But then there's Microsoft Azure, Amazon S3, Google Bigtable, other storage elements, message queues, blobs, floating on the internet to allow you to store information, to build up your own databases and metadata. So any storage, not just SQL databases. Different hardware platforms, embedded systems, software appliances, kiosks, mobile devices, and yes, desktop and notebook computers. Today on Windows, and on Macintosh and Linux through Delphi Prism. Next year for Delphi native code on Macintosh and other devices as well. Now on the server side, we also want to be able to put Delphi applications on different kinds of servers. And those Delphi server applications using DataSnap, 
or some operating system API need to connect with any kind of service, any kind of storage, provide business logic and information, and maybe connect with other types of server applications as well. And in this case, we want you to be able to put your data snap servers on Windows and the other platforms that we'll have compilers for and connect to those servers in any way possible, whether we make a compiler for a platform or not. So today, Delphi native code on Windows, Delphi Prism on Windows, Linux, Macintosh, iPhone, iPad, eventually Android. But we'll guarantee that if you use DataSnap as your interface, we will provide connective, connectivity libraries and interface generators for your code, proxy generators for your data snap servers, for all these different devices. Today in Delphi XE, we have proxy generators for Windows native, Windows through DB Express, for PHP, for Delphi Prism, for C++, and for JavaScript. So next, we'll also provide data snap proxy generators and connection libraries for iPhone, iPad, Android, Blackberry, Linux, Mac OS X native. Because it turns out that if you can put a lot of your logic and work in your data snap servers and in the databases underneath, then you can build thin client applications that run on all sorts of devices. Because most of the code then is in the data snap servers and the services. Some people wonder, do you have to build everything in Delphi? Well, it'd be nice. But there are something like 200,000 iPhone applications many of them built with a language that's more than 25 years old called Objective-C. So what we'll do is we'll provide an Objective-C data snap connection library for iPhone and iPad and a proxy generator for Objective-C from your data snap server so that you can do the user interface programming on iPhone and iPad in Objective-C until eventually we'll have a Delphi compiler for iPhone. A dead <laughs> They're doing that in the back. Just to make sure we stay awake. This morning, if you're in the auditorium, you'll see Daniele showing Android phone talking to data snap server. Right? So it's all possible. If you put most of the work in DataSnap and in your databases, it's easy to build thin clients that talk to it. We have many projects going on simultaneously inside of Embarcadero, all around the world, to make sure that we can deliver more capabilities for you faster than ever before, with still very high quality. So the 64-bit Windows compiler is being worked on. The compilers for Macintosh and Linux are being worked on. Uh, more data snap server capabilities to run data snap servers in more platforms as well. Completely new Delphi and C++ compilers being worked on so that we can get to other chips and other devices. Added capabilities for VCL. New look and feel, 
support for other graphic systems like OpenGL and Adobe Air, Flash, but still using the VCL as your interface so you can leverage all your code that you've worked on for years. The mobile connectivity I mentioned, and again, eventually with the new compilers, native code on all these devices. We're working on the next generation of our developer network and the next version of the tool cloud as well. So, for next year, Macintosh, mobile connectivity, big enhancements to the VCL with choices on look and feel and style. And then in the coming years, more and more capabilities as well. Interbase XE is now available with strong, even stronger security. And over the next several years, additional work for software tooling so all the database tools can work completely with Interbase, stored procedure debugging, and so on. A technology called Fireworks. What Fireworks is, is a project to build one client interface for programmers that works with Interbase and Firebird at the same time. So whatever capabilities Firebird has will be surfaced in the Interbase client. And we'll do that in multiple steps and continue to work with the Firebird community to provide support in Delphi and compatibility with Interbase. Yesterday, Alan Bauer made a post on Twitter to tell everyone that we reached a major milestone that the 64-bit compiler is now checked into the standard builds for Windows. And that the whole team now is going to continue to complete its work so that as we're building 32-bit windows and fixing and adding things, we're doing it for 64-bit windows at the same time. Uh, before yesterday, we had a separate version of 64-bit Delphi. But now it's built into the standard build system. OK, let me sit down. OK. Um, let's see. Let's go back to, uh, okay, let's minimize that. So what I'm going to show you now is a technology demonstration of the 64-bit compiler work that up until yesterday was part of a special build. I have a console application written in Delphi. And it just says hello from the whatever size of the default pointer is. And it'll say, OK, this program was built with that version of the compiler. So I have several batch files to build the different versions. So the first one says, use the 32-bit compiler use the 32-bit runtime library, compile that console application, and run it. And so it just echoes back, hello from the 32-bit Delphi compiler. We have a... a Another version, it's the exact same source code, but I gave it a different name so it would create a different executable. And it just says hello from size of pointer, again, compiler. 
So the batch file for this one just says use the 64-bit command line compiler, the 64-bit Windows library, and compile that console app and run it. So it just says, hello Delphi from the 64-bit Delphi compiler. And then one final example. Oh. This one's going to allocate six gigabytes of memory with get mem. And then it's going to call filchar to put a capital letter A in six gigabytes of memory, or fine, five gigabytes of memory. Ooh, 65 gigabytes of memory. No. All right. So it's compiled it, and now it's allocated the memory, but it takes a little while to fill five gigabytes of memory. Right. It'll take even longer if we change it to seven. Oh, I didn't compile it. Oh, I probably didn't save this one. Save. Oh, maybe it's already allocated. Hmm. So, just an example of uh, of using the command line compiler. So, next year at this time, we'll have complete support for. 64-bit Windows, 32-bit Windows. And we'll also have Macintosh support. So here now I'm in my Macintosh desktop. But let me go back and open up uh, an example. So this is just a standard looking application. It's got a form. It's got a client data set, a data source, a navigator, some fields on the client data set. Right. So a source code file, a form file, project file, and so on. And we have an IDE an internal IDE that has the Delphi Windows compiler and the Macintosh compiler built in. And in your project window, you have your build configurations, you have your source files, your form files, and so on. And there's, there'll be a new project option where you can specify which platform you want to build for. Windows 32, Mac OS, so that when you say build all, it then, if you do a debug build, in this example, it generates two folders, OS X32, Win32, Linux, Win64, other things. And inside of the OS X folder is your project executable and a few dynamic libraries like the Midas library, for example. And inside of the Windows, it has the executable and whatever other files you require. So if I run the project one on OS X, I get some debug info, and I now have a 
client data set with a DB image, a DB memo, a DB grid, a button. We can go in and make changes. There's a few repainting issues, but otherwise it's working. So Delphi application with VCL running on Macintosh OS X. So, just to make, just to, hello, test, testing, one, two, three, I hear music, can you turn on the wireless mic again, you guys in the back, hello, so hopefully it won't hurt your ears, so these are technologies that are being worked on for the coming year. Today we have Delphi XE available for you to purchase and use. What's great about developers is you build all different kinds of applications. Uh, a customer system, ERP, point of sale system, 1.5 million lines of code, 2,500 installations of the, of the system running across Brazil. I think this may be the biggest application, 14 million lines of Delphi code. It allows you to design custom chips, and whole circuit boards surrounding those chips. And you can model and simulate and test the entire system before you ever build the chip or build the board. Uh, AQ time and test complete, all written in Delphi. The AQ time that's integrated into Delphi XE. The Skype Windows client written in Delphi. Music management software, Media Monkey, written in Delphi. Uh, Disk Defragmenter. Speed Fan, I use this one to see how hot my processor cores are getting. All written in Delphi. Delphi is part of Rad Studio XE, which gives you Delphi, Delphi Prism, C++, and RAD, RAD PHP includes Interbase and in the Architect Edition ER Studio. And again, as I mentioned earlier, it's about the types of applications you can build. And you can choose. Maybe you want to do ASP.NET or PHP development. Or you're just doing Windows client and server development or high-speed web development. You have your choice. And you can connect to all the services. Connect through DataSnap to the databases and the remote objects that you need. And deploy your applications anywhere. On your servers, on a desktop, in a cloud infrastructure like Amazon or Microsoft or Google. Embed them in a device. And for Delphi and Rad Studio, it's about building great looking, high speed applications. Building them quickly by reusing components. And making sure that in the architectures that you use, that you can move to the future and do the future development today. So high-speed compiler, tons of components, lots of developers using Delphi around the world. Almost 2 million developers around the world using Delphi every day. Many here in Brazil and all over the world. 
the opening video used the letters X and E in the words. We've introduced XE for Delphi and many of our products. The X stands for cross-platform, cross-database, giving you one environment or one tool, but it can work in many different ways. The E stands for Embarcadero. Now, before our products were Delphi 7 or 2007, and all the other Embarcadero products had different naming systems, SMP 7.5.1. So we went to XE to tell you several things, that it works with multiple databases for multiple systems, that it can work in the tool cloud architecture that we have, and that it can be upgraded to all access. So you, if you have an XE product and you need more tools, you can easily upgrade to all access. And you can install your tools and components into the tool cloud. And then we'll have XE2, XE3, XE4 as we move along through the years. The expanded tool chest, Andriano, in a couple of minutes is going to show you all that's new in Delphi XE. We have our RAD PHP, the IDE completely rewritten in Delphi. Looks like Delphi, feels like Delphi. It just uses the PHP language to do application development and web development. Subversion integration, Andreana will show that all throughout the project system and the IDE and the ability to build, even easier build, Delphi data snap servers and clients. And you'll see many sessions today in the conference to get you up to speed on using data snap. It is the key to the future of cloud computing, of distributed computing. And we've tried and will continue to make it as simple and easy as possible to build multi-tier applications without having to rely on DCOM or some other thing. Just use the protocols of the internet. And again, all the tools. Code site from Ray's software for doing logging of the execution of your applications. Profiling with AQTON. And again, Andreano will show you in just a moment everything that's new. If you want to do visual drag and drop component-based web development, you can use Delphi, you can use Delphi Prism, you can use PHP and C++. The subversion integration for managing your source code. And if you already have a subversion server, it will work with it. All the source code to the integration of subversion has been checked back into the Subversion open source Delphi repository. So you can take a look at it, you can download it. Uh, the Jedi group, Project Jedi, is working on Jedi VCS, their version control system, to use the same enhanced IDE APIs. And all the source code for both of those is up on the Subversion server. So if you want to hook in another source code control system, all the source is there as the ultimate documentation of the change management APIs in the IDE. And again, it's how you want to architect and where you want to deploy your applications. So data snap is the key element in architecture for giving you that flexibility. Use TCP. HTTP, HTTPS, or use REST, R-E-S-T, to talk to your data snap servers, to pass data, to pass instances, instances of objects, pass objects between data snap servers and clients. Now, one of the things that has been happening for the last several years is we've put a lot of team members on improving the quality of Delphi. And you've seen it. The FastMM memory manager 
added in Delphi 7, 2007, sorry. The, um, that gave us more stability and performance. And then more engineering work to improve the quality of 2009, 2010, and even more here in Delphi XE. In 2009, we added generics to the language, right? Parameterized types, lots of complexity, but power for developers. There were problems. We believe we have fixed all the generics issues that developers reported over the last two versions. 87 fixes in generics in Delphi XE. So if you were afraid to use generics before, if you were worried that there were sharks in the water, it's safe to go swimming with generics. Speed up of the compiler, it's already fast compiler, but more performance. More documentation, of course, we'll never have enough documentation. We need you to write articles and books and blog posts about programming in Delphi. But our team is dedicated to add more and more documents. There's 23,000 new elements in Delphi and C++ just in the RTL and VCL alone. 23,000 new elements documented. Properties, methods, objects, and so on. And the team is continuing to add more. OK. I'm going to go on this microphone again. Sorry in the control room. Um, so before I finish, I want to show one more demo. Um, I used the ID, Delphi ID to wizard to build a a data snap JavaScript and REST based server. And then we added some database support for it to take that same fish fact example that you saw in the Macintosh and run it in a data snap server. And I've put that data snap server out on. on Amazon. So let me uh, come out and so out on Amazon's EC2 Elastic Cloud I've got an instance of Microsoft Windows Server 2008. It's a it's a micro instance that's running. Oh timed out. And on the micro instance, it's costing me four cents US an hour. So two dollars a day to run a Microsoft Windows server. I also have an IP address for my server. So I'm spending a little more because I have an elastic IP. And I can go and connect to, if I can remember that IP address, 46.51, oh. Okay. And I have an app, a data snap server running on Amazon. In fact, this Amazon server is running on a cloud of servers in Ireland. Okay? Could be running in Singapore, could be running in Washington State, could be running in Virginia. And so I'm going, and you can do this too, if you've got your computer, your browser, your phone, you can go to 46.51.184.2 colon port 8089. And you then have fish fact 
running as a JavaScript and REST-based server. So we can just go to the next and go through the database of fishes, right? And just use any browser. I can even use the Safari browser on the iPad, right? I'm on the Delphi XE site. But instead I go to the fish fact page, right, using Safari. Now I've got the fishes and I can choose a different fish, right? And I can move through the different fishes as well, right? So I can house all my business logic in my DataSnap server and use an Android phone, an iPhone, an iPad, or, or a Windows desktop. Right? Anybody connected to my server running on Amazon? No? Someone? Over here, maybe? Okay. So the key here is, again, build an application. Build a, web, a data snap server application and deploy it wherever you need to deploy it. Today on Windows, running on Macintosh, Windows running on desktop, running on Amazon. In this case, I'm using Macintosh, but I'm running VMware Fusion to run Windows. In my remote desktop connection, running on that server in Ireland. All I have is, yep, is here's my data snap server application where I set the port to 8089 and I started it and it's just running. It's costing me $2 US a day to keep this running, right? Serving up data, remote procedure calls, whatever logic I put in my data snap server. Right? I don't have to worry about scalability. I can start up hundreds of instances on demand using the Amazon API. I can run them on different data centers to give me high performance on different continents, on Asia, Europe, the Americas, right? If you, there's logic that if it, one server gets too busy, just start more instances. Uh, if it's a Brazilian election on the 31st, start up a thousand instances to manage the, the load. And then when it's done, just start stopping the instances and leave them stopped until you need them again or throw them away. And someone else worries about the power and the bandwidth. And I can focus on building applications and deploying them. So with, with that, I want to make sure that you have a great day today, that you have fun, that we have a chance to talk. Uh, I'll be here again all day long today, and we'll be back for the closing time for questions and, and raffles and, and everything that you need. So feel free to see me today when you're in between sessions and the coffee breaks and so on. Um, and all I can say is thank you, obrigado, for being here. I, I know I'm only here for today, but I can't wait to come back in 2014 for the World Cup, <laughs> when the U.S. will finally win the World Cup. <laughs> and then I'll be back in 2016 for sure. Oh. 
I'm just kidding. <laughs> Brazil, six star, right? Six star. You better, or it'll be bad. <laughs> I'll be here in 2016 for the Olympics in Rio, but I'll be here next year and for years to come. Again, your support of Delphi and our company is appreciated by all the developers around the world. Learn everything that you can and program every day. That's the most important part. But also have fun. Thank you very much.